Greetings and welcome back. In the previous lecture, we created our first flow graph in which we get the money variable, we turn it to a string, and we're using the start event to then write that text into our money text here. So it was our very first graph. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of refining and refactoring as we build this game up. So now what we want to do is make it so when we click on this, that it's actually going to add to our money up here. And we're going to start out with zero, and when you click it, it'll do one, two, three, four, five, just like any clicker game like a cookie clicker. So to do that, we need to get the event from the click me, this click button right here. So Bolt adds a simple way to do that. I can come down here and right click and say add unit and type on click. And you'll see as soon as I type on click, we have a on button click right here at the very top. And I can just choose it and that gives us this event. And obviously it needs to know what button we're talking about, what button we're looking for. And I can click up here on this click button and just drag it right into here. So instead of our self, which is the game manager, that's what it'd be looking for a click on the game manager, which the game manager doesn't have an on click button or anything that would fire that off. Instead, we drop our click button in there. Notice how it changes here to this game object being uh, what we're going to be using, the one that we specify. So we can run this right now and verify that this button's getting clicked and that this, this flowed graph is retrieving that event. When I click it, see how this event is getting fired off when I click the button. And so now we can wire things up to it. When we click the button, we want to add one to the money and put it in, in this variable. So we can right click here and say add unit and just type add. And at the very top is this add in math generic, returns the sum of two objects. And you can see the, the help is built right in, right there at the bottom. So I pull add up. And notice that there's no flow on add. There's nothing here. This just adds numbers together. And Bolt has a very intuitive way of deciding what should have flows and what shouldn't. And there's just, as you'll see as we build this out, there's just no reason for add to have any flows built into it. So when we click the button, what, what are we wanting to really do when we click the button? Well, when we click the button, our action is, is we want to set the money variable to be one additional amount than what it currently is. And in order to do that, we have to get the current money, we have to add one to that money, and then we have to store it back in money. So this is going to take a little more space, and we've kind of crunched up down here. We can hit Shift Spacebar and make this big, and this will make it easier for us. And I can left click and drag a, a rectangle around this and move this all up here. And I can actually control click and drag a box around this and say startup. So it, it kind of organizes our graph a little bit here. So this is what's going to happen when everything starts up. And this is going to what's going to happen inside of here when we click. Click button make money. So we're just organizing a little bit already. So in this on click, we know we're going to need to have to get this money variable in order to know what we need to add on to it. So we could click this and drag it down to here, you'd think, and this will actually work. We can actually reuse this get variable up here, and then for our B, I can click and drag, and we have a, f a float literal or an int literal. Well, we want to use a float because money's a float. And we'll just, for now, type a 1 in here to add 1 to whatever the money is. So the money's going to come in here on A. The float of 1 is going to come in on B. And then we have A plus B coming out the other side. And I can left click it and drag, and it'll automatically prompt me for the next unit that I want. Well, what do I want to do after I've added those together? Pause the video for a second. You know, what, what am I going to do next? Well, after I've added them together, I need to set the variable. So I set the variable here. 
and I just type set variable and actually I could probably type just set and notice when I type set set money comes right here and when I click it it's automatically filling in the variable type here or the variable name and I can pick and choose if I had more variables and with that it's setting the variable now once the variable set then I probably would want to come back up here maybe turn the float to a string and then fire off the text could I do that hmm maybe I could we'll see but we're still not doing anything with this button event here this on button click so I need to drag it over and say that's what is gonna trigger the set variable so just like I said that the way that bolt works is when you click that on click event you have to think okay what do I really want to do when I click click that well we want to add one to our money so the set variable is the really the next action in order to satisfy this you know unit this action we have looking backwards have to add here the money and it's going to look all the way backwards to here to get the variable from here to feed this in and then it'll look backwards again uh, to get the float of one and all that will get put into here to set the variable money you know add one to it and then we're trying here to reuse the the values here now we'll see if that works because what might happen is is when it hits here it's going to try to retrieve the value from here which that that's okay you know it can retrieve the value here because we just set it here it's the same value so we set it here the flow comes up it says we need to convert a value in a string well what value do we need to convert money so it just like basically regrabs it from here you know alternatively maybe we would do this but that would create two inputs and it wouldn't know which ones to use so let's leave it for now like that and let's run it and even after you run it you can hit shift space to minimize this here this uh, not minimize but bring it back to normal size now when you run it and you had the flow graph up in full screen mode it doesn't switch this to game so we gotta switch that to game so it's running I can see it firing I don't see it updating our our uh, text so I'm gonna drag this up so we can see a little bit what's happening up here and we'll click it and it's hitting the two screen ah but we we this is where we do need to have this flow here that we didn't have before so if you'll notice previously our start event was enough to trigger this flow and uh, pull it back you know it would come back and look for this but now that um, it's driven by this other option down here this set variable let's go we need to push the flow through here like that we're not going to rely on start only to do this so let's see if that works for us see how we get there and there it is so every time we click we go up one just like that and notice how that we can see all the flows through here and we can see the values of these as everything is functioning just like that click it in advance as many times as you want and that is the basic of idle clickers basically you click and then you know they go up now what we do know is idle clickers also have timers so in our next lecture we're gonna put a timer in so it doesn't just immediately when you click make give you the money we're gonna have it so when you click we're gonna have a timer go and maybe it's two seconds three seconds and so on and then you will get the money now this is gonna be remarkably easy in bolt and it's gonna allow us also in the next lecture to incorporate a slider that we can actually see the progress as well so uh, and this is where we're gonna really see some of the power bolt and where if you were doing this in C sharp or even in uh, and other visual languages like Playmaker, it's just not quite as simple as it is in Bolt. So, look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.